What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Back to the Roots. Uh, I'm joined with Mac Mullins from episode four. I don't actually know it. No, he was in episode one, actually. And the D&D episode. Check that one out. It's a classic. Two. And also Graham Ward, many time co-host slash whatever it is. Are we uh, guest. opening? We're cracking in. We're just doing A&W today. Classic. Fall back. So, um, real quick. Can you turn your levels up just a little bit? My levels up? <laughs> you just want to do your ASMR. Uh, let me turn you up. Okay. Yeah, um, turn them up. Not so, me. You. Well, yeah, but I, Wait, no, I'm you. like, I can't get too much louder otherwise I'm going to clip, so I just have to turn up your overall. Oh, okay. Can you turn you? No, I can't. <laughs> okay, everybody. Um, so before we jump into what we're going to, which I'm excited about because we discovered some fun AI stuff, um, I wanted to start off with, like, I, I'm starting a new icebreaker segment called um, This or That. Oh. This or That. <laughs> I, it's, there's going to be an insert Graphic up on screen. There's this or that. An insert there. Of, this or that. But. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Basically, Graham, it's the questions you always ask. So, like oh, last yeah. night, I asked Josh and Nathan like the spider quadriplegic question. Yeah. Um. So, but I don't have one. But Graham, you always have one on tap. So, mm. what's you have a couple seconds to come up with your question? Uh, if you had the, um, if you had a boot, it was like an UGG. That was hot pink and it could adapt climate based on what you needed. So it could be really warm when it's cold or really like airy when it's hot outside. But it was hot pink Uggs. It said, like, uh, what I said last night was, I love big booty. Ooh. <laughs> you said that last night? I asked this question last night. <laughs> to right. Blake? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. Would you, would you, and this could be your only pair of shoes. Okay. It's a pair of Uggs that adapt to the temperature. Correct. Hot pink. Hot and pink. And are they comfortable? I like big booty. They are very comfortable. It says okay. it says I love big booty on both of them. Uh, or is it like under the foot like in Toy it's Story? One says I love, the other one says booty. Okay. <laughs> big booty. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what's the, what's what's the, the other? What's the other? Uh, I guess, oh, would you wear that? <laughs> or would you have no shoes ever? <laughs> and you'd have to walk on hot coals every day. You're, you have sh- invisible shoes. Invisible the, shoes. They're they're Crocs. Invisible Crocs. Yes. Would you be in trouble? Like if you warmed with the office? It depends. Like with societal. Which would be more in mm, trouble? Bare actually... feet or pink Uggs that say I love big booty. Are they like hot Dang. pink? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with um is it actual barefoot or invisible Uggs? Invisible. Invi- <laughs> well, or invisible. They're invisible crocs. Well, crocs. how about just tennis shoes? But they're invisible. But they're invisible. I'm gonna go with invisible. I realize that that like hinders me a little bit, um, of where I can go into. I don't know. That's a tough one. I feel like once you get past the floaty part, though, like if you can <laughs> show that, like, no, I'm not barefoot right now, and like you let them touch them, I think that they would be like, oh. Okay, I, I'd feet. go invisible because I'd be like, just touch my foot, sir. Like, I just imagine walking into a gas station, sir. Get out! It's like a Seven Eleven because they're always the ones that say no shoots, no shoes, no shoes, yeah. and uh, <laughs> get out! No, touch my feet, <laughs> and then you get arrested. <laughs> well, it, I mean, you just have to make sure it's not a minor. Then you, do. <laughs> then you're okay. <laughs> then you're good to go. That's good to know. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's jump into Wait, what, what we're actually picking? doing. You're yeah, picking the big booty yeah, slippers. Yeah. Uh, no, I probably do invisible. That was a twist. I came up with it just now and I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I like the all the work that went into coming up with the hot pink Uggs though. Hot I do pink like that. Uggs that also change with the climate. Am I allowed to reverse engineer them? <laughs> In what way? Oh, so you can so just... I can figure out how to make any shoe. Any shoe climatized? Yeah. That would be cool. That actually might make it worth it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go with the big booty shoes. But you st- even if you can't, you still have to wear them forever. Like, even if you do re- But I could sell them. And imagine how comfortable your feet would be all the time. Well, but can you take... You can't take them off. You can't. You, but you're they would acclimate. Them they in... would acclimate. Oh, but I can take off the invisible ones? No. Well, Wait, then I'm in the same t- situation. Oh, <laughs> that's hell on earth. <laughs> and let's be I honest... I didn't realize you can't take your shoes off I, at all. It, Not even in the shower? It wasn't even... Take your, you just didn't have another pair of shoes, and you couldn't get oh. another pair of shoes. See, but you okay. could you could just cheat the invisible shoe thing though, and spray paint them. That's true. That's true. Or you could like put paper on them. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. You wrap them in toilet paper. Yeah. Like, Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> <You got them. laughs> Why are they brown? <laughs> it's just the color of the day. That's all. <laughs> brown is in. Brown and yellow. Okay. Um, so, shout out to my brother Keaton for sending me this. Uh, chat.open.ai.com. It's an AI chat bot, but this is the only one I've tried, but based on... Uh, what I have tried, this one blows the rest of them out of the water. Basically, you can tell it pretty much anything you want. You type it in, and it responds in a text response. So, for example, I could be, how old is Dwayne Johnson? This is a very simple one that doesn't show its power. Um, That's basically it's a true Google power. search. Dwayne, I, it was. That was a Google search. Give me something more specific. Kratos uh, making love with a sweet no. snow camel. Uh, tell a story about hot pink Uggs. Uh, story. That you have to wear forever. Uggs that you have to wear forever. So that's all I typed in. And here we go. Once upon a time, there was a young woman named Sophia who absolutely loved hot pink. She thought it was the most vibrant and lively color, and she loved to wear it as often as possible. One day, Sophia came across a pair of hot pink Uggs while shopping at the mall. She was immediately drawn to them and decided to splurge on the boots, despite her high, despite the high price tag. Sophia wore hot pink Uggs everywhere, from running errands to going out with friends. She loved the way they looked and the way they kept her feet warm and comfortable. However, as the weeks went by, Sophia began to notice that the hot pink Uggs seemed to be getting light, tighter and tighter on her feet. <laughs> no matter how much she tried to stretch them out or wear them in, they seemed to be getting smaller and smaller. She began to worry that she had made a mistake in buying them, but she was too in love with the color to give them up. One day, Sophia was walking through the park when she suddenly tripped and fell. As she looked down at her feet, she realized that her hot pink Uggs were now so small that they were cutting off the circulation to her toes. She tried to take them off, but they seemed to be stuck to her feet. Panicked, Sophia ran to the nearest store and bet uh, be not begged, begged the salesperson for help. The salesperson tried to remove the Uggs, but no matter how hard they pulled, they wouldn't budge. It was as if the Uggs had a mind of their own and were determined to stay on Sophia's feet forever. Sophia was heartbroken. She had loved her hot pink Uggs so much, but now she would have to wear them forever. She would never be able to wear any other shoes again, no matter how much she wanted to. She realized that sometimes our love for certain things can have unintended consequences. <laughs> but she made the most of it and started a hot pink Uggs fashion line that became extremely popular and made her a millionaire. <laughs> These always That's end so. Good. That is straight from the AI brain, ladies they and gentlemen. They always end so like perfect. Like they bookend every single story. They have like a little moral. It's like nugget. remember, guys. It's about the friends you made along the way, not the pain that you encountered. But here's the real beauty of this chatbot. So that's where it finished. But I can just respond to it by saying, "Continue the story." Add snow camels. <laughs> and invisible shoes. Add snow camels. In and invisible shoes. And invisible shoes. That's my prompt. And it continues the story. Sophia tried hard, tried to make the best of her situation, but as the years went by, it became harder and harder to hide the fact that she was stuck in her hot pink Uggs. She couldn't wear any other. I had to swallow. I'm sorry. <laughs> she couldn't wear any other shoes, no matter how much she wanted to, and she started to feel like she was missing out on so much. One winter, Sophia was visiting a remote village in the mountains where she had heard about a rare and magical creature called the snow camel. <laughs> Legend had it that the snow camel could grant wishes to anyone who found it and asked for its help. <laughs> Sophia knew that this was her chance to finally be free of her hot pink Uggs. She set off into the snowy wilderness, determined to find the snow camel and make her wish. After days of searching, she finally came across the creature, a majestic white camel with a shimmering mane of ice. <laughs> Sophia fell to her knees. If we have any artists listening, I would love to get a drawing of this. I want I want Carter Warren next to a snow camel. Please. With pink Uggs on. That'll be the next AI episode. <laughs> so, Sophia fell to her knees and begged the snow camel to help her. The snow camel looked down at Sophia with its wise and knowing eyes and nodded his head. I will grant your wish, it said, <laughs> but you must give something in return. Sophia hesitated for a moment, but then she knew exactly what she had to do. She took off her hot pink Uggs and offered them to the snow camel. Take these, she said. It just <laughs> broke logic. Take these, she said to the snow camel. Mm -hmm. She said, they are, mo they are my most prized possession, but I would rather be free of them than keep them forever. 
The snow camel accepted the Uggs, and with a flick of its tail, it granted Sophia's wish. Suddenly, Sophia felt a weight lifted off her feet, and she was able to wiggle her toes freely for the first time in years. As a thank you to the snow camel, Sophia asked if there was anything she could do to help. The snow camel told her of a special pair of invisible shoes that it had always wanted, but had been unable to find. He gets so, both. Sophia, <laughs> <laughs> dang! He gets both. Sophia promised to do her best to track down the shoes and bring them back to the snow camel. And so, Sophia set off on a new adventure. Determined to find the invisible shoes and bring them back to the magical snow camel. She traveled far and wide, searching <laughs> high and low for the elusive shoes. And then she found them. <laughs> and in and the she end, remembered her friends are her best friends. <laughs> and in the end, she succeeded, bringing the shoes back to the snow camel as a thank you for granting her wish and freeing her from her hot pink Uggs. From then on, Sophia was able to wear any shoe she wanted. And she lived happily ever after. See? Grateful to the snow camel for its kindness and generosity. So, listen up. <laughs> Figure out what your hot pink Uggs are. What's something that you're choosing, maybe that you're just infatuated with, that is really weighing you down. Give and them up to the snow camel today. Yes. For a measly gift of $5 a month, you too can have your very own snow camel. You know, I'm going to send this to uh, to Brent so he can use it as a, a parable, because I think there's <laughs> lots of crossovers. That would be great for the youth. What is your snow camel? What is your snow camel? Your snow camel should be Jesus. <laughs> he will take your weight off of you in return for if, if you something impossible to find. If you sacrifice to him. <laughs> That's not how Jesus works. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways. So are we starting over or is that a, are we continuing no, that was, the so, pink? Okay. So that I was an example. That was the example. Example okay. story. So what we're going to do is we're going to go around and for about 20 minutes, not for 20 minutes, we're not going to time it, but... We are going to run with a story, a separate story for each of us, and we're going to then offer prompts to each other to continue the story. Um, and you can tell different types of stories. So you can do like just a story time story like Carter did. Yeah. Or you can do like a movie. A movie script, script which is a lot of fun. Which is which is fun. Okay. So um, I'm thinking of a number between one and five million. Uh, Graham. 328. Okay. Eight million four hundred and eighty-two. The answer was three point five million. <laughs> I so win. Graham wins. Ah, crap. So Graham, you get to go first. Oh. So you have to come up yeah. with the first, the basic the premise. first prompt. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do movie script. Movie script about three men. We're Graham, three men. We are three men. Carter. <gasps> And Mac. And Mac. <gasps> I'm not a sassy chicken in this one. <laughs> he was a sassy chicken in yesterday's <laughs> this story. This break yesterday. <laughs> we spent a lot of time doing this yesterday. As they search for... Any suggestions? Apple pie. <laughs> Beautiful. Harrison <laughs> Ford's <laughs> famous <laughs> apple pie. And here we go. Interior, kitchen, day. <laughs> Graham, Carter, and Max stand in front of a cluttered kitchen counter, looking at a recipe book. Graham, I can't believe we're doing this. Harrison Ford's famous apple pie recipe has been lost for years. Carter says, you can mime your... <laughs> yes, but I think the fame <laughs> and fortune will achieve if we find it and sell it to the highest bidder. But I think of the fame, but think of the fame and fortune. Mac, I just hope it's worth all the trouble. I heard it's a secret ingredient that made it the best pie in the world. Graham, excited parentheses, <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know unless we try. Let's do it. The three men begin to gather ingredients and mix them together, trying to recreate the famous recipe. As they work, they discuss their theories on what the secret ingredient might be. Carter, I bet it's cinnamon. Graham, no, I think that's... Nutmeg. And Mac, <laughs> I heard it's something really unusual, like ground up insects or something. <laughs> As they continue to speculate, they accidentally spill some of the ingredients and make a mess. They laugh and continue to work getting more and more excited as the pie begins to take shape. Oh boy, this pie is really taking shape. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many insects in it. <laughs> Finally, they pop the pie in the oven and wait anxiously for it to bake. 
As the delicious aroma fills the kitchen, they can hardly contain their excitement. Interior kitchen, later. (laughs) (laughs) Still the same kitchen, but later. The pie finally is ready, and the three men gather around around the counter to sample it. They take a bite and are immediately blown away by the flavor. This is the most amazing pie I've ever had. Can't even taste the insects. Graham. In parentheses, in awe. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is the famous Harrison Ford apple pie. Carter, excited. <laughs> we did it. We found the secret recipe. Mac, happily. <laughs> and it was worth all the trouble. The three men high five and celebrate their success. And they Woo! decide to sell the recipe and become rich and famous <laughs> overnight. <laughs> the end. That's okay, what I like. okay, okay. I have, I have. Okay, so continue the story with introspective discussions about reality and depression. Should I say continue the script or story? Or is it script? script? Okay. Continue the script. As the three men have, what was it? Introspective discussion. Introspective. Discussion about reality, reality, and root beer, and root. I changed beer. it in tutus. Yes, in tutus. <laughs> in two twos. What are tutus? A little ballerina. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wonderful. How do you spell tutus? Hey, whoever's the artist that's making the snow camel with Carter, uh, please put tutus. us all in tutus. Yes, please. Um, I'm checking you, Graham. Uh, wait. How do you spell? Okay, just Mac. T U T two T U T T U T two T U T U S tutus. Is it all one word? Yeah. Okay. And here we go. Tutus. Interior kitchen. Later. <laughs> Graham, Carter, and Mac sit on the kitchen table, each holding a slice of the famous apple pie. They are deep in thought as they enjoy this delicious dessert. Graham. Pensively. <laughs> you know, finding this recipe has made me think a lot about the nature of reality. Carter, surprised. Really? How so? Graham, well, we thought this recipe was lost forever, but it turns out it was right in front of us the whole time. It just took a little bit of effort and creativity to uncover it. Mac, nodding. And it's like with so many things in life. And it's like that with so many things in life. <laughs> we think something is impossible, but with a little bit of determination and perseverance, we can achieve it. Carter, thoughtfully, yeah. you know, I've always wanted to perform in a tutu while drinking root beer. <laughs> I, I never thought to. it was possible. We but now I realize like that, that it, if I set my mind to it, I can make it happen. Graham, laughing. Well, there's no stopping you now. <laughs> The three men share a laugh and continue to enjoy their pie <laughs> and their philosophical discussion. That was it. I didn't actually perform. Boo. Mac. Okay, Mac, you're up with this prompt. Okay. Continue script. The men find themselves in a dance studio. Or no, sorry, in a dance off with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I don't know how, but Dwayne Johnson keeps finding his way into the into the AI <laughs> stories. Well, I feel like I feel like we need to have more rock. We need more Dwayne. We need the Dwayne. Interior dance studio day. <laughs> oh boy, it's finally happening. Graham Carter and Mac stand on a dance floor, facing off against Dwayne the Rock <laughs> Johnson. It just a, jumps right into big <laughs> jump. Just straight up. Are the we men in tutus? are dressed in tutus. <laughs> yeah, let's go. And holding. Bottles of root beer, <laughs> just as they had discussed in the kitchen. <laughs> Dwayne, smirking. <laughs> I don't think you guys were serious about this dance off. <laughs> uh, no, that was me. Actually. No, wait. Yes. Now, Graham, determined. <laughs> we may not be professional dancers, but we're ready to give it our all. Dwayne, chuckling. All right, let's do this. <laughs> The four men get into put, get into position, and the music starts to play. They begin to move and groove, each showcasing their own unique style. <laughs> As the dance battle heats up, the men begin to pull out all the stops. Graham does a series of impressive backflips. Carter busts out some impressive breakdancing moves, and Mac does a series of intricate footwork. <laughs> 
Dwayne, impressed. <laughs> Whoa, you guys have some serious moves. Graham, panting. Thanks, we've been practicing. <laughs> Everybody in the comments tagged Dwayne the Rock Johnson. As the music reaches its climax, the men give it all, give it their all, and pull off some perfect. Some impressive final moves. The crowd cheers, and the judges award the victory to Graham, Carter, and Mac. Let's go! Woo! Suck it, Dwayne. Graham, uh, exhausted but triumphant. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We won the dance off against Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Carter laughing. I can't <laughs> believe it. Can't and believe Mac it. smiling. And all of this is because we followed our dreams and believed in ourselves. The three men hug and celebrate <laughs> their victory. As the crowd cheers. Woo! In our tutus. <laughs> Only tutus. Right? That's the gayest story I've ever heard. <laughs> Do we want to continue it's the or most life a new story? accurate story? Um I feel like we could we could I think, move on. Yeah, okay. Okay, we can move on. Um, Mac, you're up next. Okay. Um write a buddy comedy action movie script revolving around a plucky young man named Dwayne <laughs> Rock. No, 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 no. No more else. Dwayne Johnson. Okay, who should I be who should I name him? Um um who's another guest on the podcast? Arnold. Josh Twitty. Sure, Josh Twitty. Josh Twitty and his Sidekick, his sassy sidekick, <laughs> Nathan Jones. <laughs> so, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Don't hit enter yet. All right. Put jujitsu in before Nathan. <laughs> sidekick. Sassy jujitsu sidekick. Loving sidekick. Yeah. How do you spell jujitsu? J I U J I T S U. How, wait, say it again. <laughs> J I U space J I T S U. J I T S U. Yep. Wow, I'm dumb. No, you're not. It's Loving a, it's a tough word. sidekick Nathan Jones. All right, write a buddy comedy action movie script revolving around a plucky young man named Josh Twitty and his sassy jiu jitsu loving sidekick Nathan Jones. Here we go. The Twitty and Jones Show, <laughs> Act One. <laughs> we open on a shot of a bustling city street, panning up to reveal a sign of the, for the Twitty and Jones Detective Agency. We cut inside to see a cluttered office where our heroes, Josh Twitty and Nathaniel Jones, are sitting at their desks, staring at a computer screen. Josh, frustrated. I can't believe it. Another dead end on this case. Nathan, nonchalant. Yeah, well, that's what you get for taking on a case for free. Josh, <laughs> defensive. I just wanted to help out that help out that poor guy. I, he couldn't afford our usual fees. Nathan shrugs, and now we're broke again. <laughs> Josh stands up. I've had enough of this. I'm going to work out and clear my head. Nathan <laughs> stands up. Oh, me too. I've been itching to get get on the mat and do some jujitsu. <laughs> nice. Josh looks skeptical. You jujitsu? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you only liked the cute instructor. <laughs> Nathan laughs. Yeah, well, he's not here right now. <laughs> Come on, Twitty. Let's go sweat out our problems. Did it say Twitty? <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. We see a montage of Josh and Nathan training at the gym, with Nathan showing off his jujitsu skills and Josh struggling to keep up. As they spar, they discuss their latest case, a wealthy businessman who's gone missing. Josh, breathless. I just can't shake the feeling that something's fishy is going on in this case. Nathan, also breathless. Yeah, well, we're not getting any closer to solving it by just talking about it. We need a lead. Josh, suddenly determined. That's it. We'll go undercover at the businessman's company and try to gather some information. Nathan, excited. Ooh, undercover. I like it. What'll we be? <laughs> Nathan nod, or Josh thinks for a moment. How about we pretend to be consultants? We can say we're there to help streamline the company's operations. Nathan nods. Yeah, that could work. Let's do it. 
Act two. Oh my this God. is like the long. This is like the longest one. This is a show. <laughs> it's good. Josh and Nathan arrive at the businessman's company dressed in smart suits, s- smart suits, <laughs> smart suits, and, and carrying fake resumes. They're greeted by the CEO, Mr. Richardson, <laughs> who is gruff and unimpressed by their presence. Mr. Richardson, sarcastic, consultants, huh? What makes you two qualified to give advice to run a company? Josh, confident. We may not have traditional business experience, but we have a knack for problem solving and thinking outside the box blocks. Nathan chuckles. (laughs) Plus, we're cheap. (laughs) (laughs) Coming from the guy who gave Twitty flack for going free. Okay, continue. Mr. Richardson. (sighs) Fine, I'll give you a chance. But if you don't deliver results, you're out of here. Josh and Nathan set to work, poking around the company and trying to gather information on the missing businessman. They quickly realize that something shady is going on with Mr. Richardson and his associates. They're acting strange and they're trying to cover up their tracks. As they investigate themselves, they find themselves in danger. Hold on. Got to hit record on the other camera again. (laughs) So now's a good time. Dude, this like, okay. If you haven't subscribed on our YouTube channel, go to Back to the Roots on YouTube, Back to the Roots Podcast. Follow us there. Subscribe. We post shorts. We post the full video episodes, which are also vol- also available on Spotify. And we're going to be doing some fun content for you guys in tutus next month. Just you wait, but only on our Patreon, five ninety nine a month, and you can get in on all this tutu action. And in February, we're going to be having a mud wrestling competition. Be there or be square. $85,000 a month and you can see it all right now. $100 a month, you can take part. <laughs> $10 and you can take part. <laughs> okay, With me. This is like a Brooklyn Nine-Nine episode. Yeah. Okay, continue, okay, Mac. Here we go. So Josh, sets, Josh and Nathan just set out. They're trying to, they realize that Mr. Richardson and his associates are acting strange. As they investigate, they find themselves in danger and have to use their wits and... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse? I haven't had soda today, so it was like a little... Anyways, Nathan's jujitsu skills to escape. Along the way, they meet a spunky receptionist named Mandy, who... And then it stops. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. So what we gotta thing. continue. Alright, Carter, you go first. Oh boy. Um, okay, continue... It's funny that you said mud, mud wrestling, because halfway through I'm thinking, I think a good prompt would be to add a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, like an inflatable pool filled with jello. Inflatable pool full of jello. And 20 staple guns. And 20 staple guns. And a thirst for vengeance. And a thirst for vengeance. I spelled vengeance wrong. That's fine. The Twitty and Jones Show, Act Three. <laughs> Screw Mandy. We are not adding her at all because <laughs> they completely skipped over Mandy. Anyways, Act Three. Josh and Nathan are hot on the trail of the missing businessman, and they suspect that Mr. Richardson is behind his disappearance. They decide to confront Mr. Richardson at his fancy mansion, hoping to catch him off guard and extract some information. As they sneak into the mansion, they hear a commotion coming from the backyard. They follow the noise and find themselves confronting, confronted with a bizarre sight, an inflatable pool filled with jello and Mr. Rich- Richardson's henchman armed with 20 staple guns. Josh, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Mr. Richardson, <laughs> it's simple, boys. I'm going to use these staple guns to pin you into the jello and leave you to rot. No one will ever know what happened to you. It's airtight. Nathan, sarcastic. Oh, that's just peachy. Josh, determined. We're not going down without a fight. Nathan nods. You got that right. It's time for some jujitsu. <laughs> As Mr. Richardson and his henchmen charge at them, Josh and Nathan spring into action. Nathan uses his jujitsu to take down the henchmen, while Josh uses his quick thinking to distract Mr. Richardson. In the chaos, they manage to grab hold of the staple guns and turn the tables on the attackers. As the dust settles, Josh and Nathan stand victorious, the inflatable pool of jello and a mess around them. Mr. Richardson is apprehended, and the missing businessman is found safe and sound. Josh, panting. I can't believe we actually did it. Nathan, grinning. Yeah, well, you can thank my jujitsu for that. 
Josh, I forgot Nathan was sassy in this. <laughs> Josh laughing. And my quick thinking, we make a pretty good team. <laughs> Nathan nods. Yeah, we do. And we've got to thank Mandy for helping us out. <laughs> Mandy appears out of nowhere. No problem. Glad I could help. <laughs> Does it say appears yes. out of nowhere? It's like it's actually listening to our conversation. That's Josh fantastic. smirks. So what do you say we go celebrate with some real detective work? Nathan, excited. Ooh, you mean like solving mysteries and catching bad guys? Josh nods. Exactly. The Twitty and Jones Detective Agency is back in business. The trio high five and walk off into the sunset, ready for their next adventure. The end. <laughs> yeah. My bad, people. That scared me so He got bad. so scared. Don't worry, oh. I, turn, I turned it down. Okay. Woo. Wow, that was impressive. Okay, Graham, do you have? I do want to add something. Maybe, okay, yeah, yeah. But we can consider this an official end. No, you can go go for it. Continue script. Continue uh, script. As they Wait, go to celebrate. What if? Can we do? Can we try something really quick? Instead of continue script, could we say make a sequel? Okay, make a sequel. Make a sequel. Mandy steals Nathan's jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I don't this. know how to spell sequel. I'm just gonna put continue script. <laughs> <laughs> sequel is continue S E Q U E L. Mandy, right? Steals Nathan's jujitsu. <laughs> the Twitty and Jones Show, Act Four. <laughs> Josh, Nathan, and Mandy are celebrating their victory over Mr. Richardson at a local bar. They are congratulating each other and reminiscing about the crazy events that led to the missing businessman being found. Nathan, laughing. I can't believe we ended up in that inflatable pool full of jello. That was insane. Mandy, grinning. Yeah, but you guys were amazing. I've never seen anyone take down a group of henchmen like that. Nathan, modest. Oh, it was nothing. Just some basic... Jiu-jitsu moves. Mandy, intrigued. Jiu-jitsu? I've always wanted to learn how to do that. <laughs> Nathan, surprised. Really? I didn't think you were the martial arts type. Mandy, shrugs. I've always been fascinated by it, but I never had the chance to try it out. Maybe you could teach me some moves? Nathan, smirks. I don't know. You might just be a natural. <laughs> Josh, laughs. I think that's a great idea. We can all train together. Nathan, hesitant. I don't know, guys. I'm not sure that I'm ready to share my jujitsu secrets with just anyone. Mandy, come on, Nathan. You can't keep all that talent to yourself. Plus, it'll be fun. Josh nods. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe we'll even come up with some new moves together. Nathan sighs. Fine, I'll teach you guys some jujitsu. But if you end up using it against me, I will never forgive you. The trio laugh and clink their glasses together, excited to start their new journey, training. As they continue to train and work on cases together, Josh, Nathan, and Mandy become a formidable team, using their combined skills and wits to take down bad guys and solve mysteries. They can become known as the Twitty Jones and Mandy Detective Agency. <laughs> and their adventures continue on. Mandy, the end. Mandy doesn't have a last name. Okay, wait. Continue story. Can I please do this? Yes, yes, Continue yes. script. Mandy turns out to be a bad guy all along okay the twitty and jones show josh and nathan and mandy have been working together as a detective agency for several months taking on cases and using their combined skills to solve mysteries they have become a well-oiled machine with nathan's jujitsu josh's quick thinking and mandy's charm and wit all coming into play but as they take on new cases things start to feel off mandy seems distant and evasive. And Josh and Nathan begin to suspect that she might be hiding something. As they dig deeper into the case, they uncover evidence that suggests Mandy is the one behind the crimes that they've been investigating all along. They confront her and she admits that she was only oh pretending God. to be their ally, using them to further her own criminal agenda. Josh, angry, I can't believe it. You were using us all along? Mandy, cold, I'm sorry, guys, but I needed the money, and you were my ticket to success. Nathan, furious. How could you do this to us? We trusted you. Mandy shrugs. 
It's just business. <laughs> Sorry, I had to end this way. <laughs> Josh determined. It's not over yet. We're going to bring you down. We're going to make sure you pay for your crimes. As Mandy tries to escape, <laughs> Josh and Nathan use their skills to take her down. <laughs> bringing her to justice and solving the case once it, that was lame in the aftermath the Twitty and Jones detective agency is stronger than ever having survived a betrayal and come out on top and here's the note they continue to work together taking on new cases and always having each other's backs aww so wholesome if you don't know already <laughs> Mac cries when he does voices oh, it's I not true I didn't see the tears coming they yeah. were streaming they were that one was I put my heart and soul into that Okay, here's the, here's our next one. Yeah. The um, end. <clears throat> I kay. hate Mandy. <laughs> Let me think. Wait, is it time to be real? Guys, it's time to be real. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? He's, he just still doesn't know what this is. I'm not a boomer. Oh, this is such. This is the, my best be real yet. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's right when you were. Well, it's real. <laughs> it just looks like you're go. crying. Here, let me. I'm gonna run really fast. I'll be right back. He's be gonna run quick. really fast. Be real for a second. Okay, uh, we're going to wait for the next prompt. I have an idea of where I want it to Fun go. Fun fact, but... this, in the examples, it says, uh, got any creative ideas for 10-year-old's birthday? I feel like I should ask this, like... That's actually really smart. Gift ideas? There's a lot of practical applications for, for this. Um, your wife. Just practical ideas for your wife? Gift ideas. Oh, okay. Here are gift ideas... For your wife. Jewelry. A piece of jewelry is a timeless, meaningful gift. Consider a bracelet, a necklace, or a pair of earrings that your wife may love. Two, a spa day. Uh. <laughs> Treat your wife to a relaxing spa day where she can enjoy massages, facials, and other spa treatments. Three, a cooking or a baking class. That's actually kind of a good one. If your wife enjoys cooking or baking, consider signing her up for a cooking or baking class. This could be a fun, interactive gift that allows her to learn skills and techniques i think that's a pretty key thing is if she likes it because otherwise it's yeah. like buying her a gym membership yeah <laughs> it's just kind of like you suck at this here's a subscription to make you better a subscription to a magazine or streaming service a magazine people still do that yeah or oh, a personalized yeah. gift wait a subscription <laughs> to oh my gosh <laughs> you turned straight into the mic to deliver that <clears throat> there's a weekend getaway um, practical. A new piece of technology. I'm asking if your you. wife is tech savvy, consider giving her a new piece of technology, such as a smartphone, tablet, or laptop. Oh, I guess you're loaded. I asked it, should I go skydiving? And it gives me all of the reasons to do it. Here are things to d consider when deciding whether to go skydiving. Physical fitness, mental preparedness, safety, personal comfort level. It's very thoughtful, but it won't let you kill anybody. The AI I bought, oh. not skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it said that. <laughs> <laughs> skydiving, just it doesn't let you kill anybody. If you do decide to go skydiving, be sure to follow all safety instructions and listen to the instruction of your instructor. Stay within your limits and never feel pressured to do something that makes you uncomfortable. Uh, I put in like a... a, like a a dream of mine, which is more of a Google search, but it's like what to expect when scuba diving with a whale. Oh, okay. And it said scuba diving with whales can be thrilling and memorable experience. However, it is important to keep in mind that whales are wild animals and it is important to respect their space and behavior. Here are a few things to consider when scuba diving with whales. And I have a list of four things now. Wow. Stay safe at a distance. Respect the whale's behavior. Be aware of your surroundings and follow the guidelines of your dive operator. Oh, nice. Cool. If anybody has the ability to hook us up to go sky or not skydiving with whales, <laughs> <laughs> skydiving with whales, <laughs> uh, to go scuba diving with whales, um, hook us up because that's something we'd like to do. By the way, speaking of that, real quick, I heard recently that somebody has a job. It was a random podcast, but they their job was to transport large like cargo 
in like the large cargo planes. Okay. And a regular thing that they transport is whales. What? In planes. How? Usually two at a time. Do they like shit? In case one dies. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we got the backup. <laughs> do they do that thing like in Free Willy where they just have like the water bottle that they just like pump and squirt on them? I think so. That feels so inhumane. But can you be, imagine being the whale? You're like sedated, but you wake up halfway through and your eyes like right next to the window. <laughs> and it's just like you're looking down. Imagine from... the plane goes down and just like. Here it goes. <laughs> and it lands on like a, fall, a small farm town. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> We're going to eat good for the next two weeks, brother. Yeah. It's blubber time. Let's go. Dwayne The Rock Johnson makes a movie out of it. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. I got to remember my prompt that I was going to do. Sorry. I had to blow my nose and then I ended up going to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. This is going to be a longer prompt. At the same time. <laughs> Mac is a infomercial. How do you spell infomercial? Wait, I can. I got it. Okay. Mac is an infomercial. It's a famous. 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 I can't type today. Mac is a famous infomercial personality. His friend Graham does the video producing. And his other friend, Carter, is the brains behind the products that he's selling. Try just doing product that he is selling. Let's okay. see if it puts like a... If it creates the product. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of an inf- uh, infomercial filming... <laughs> How do you spell infomercial? Just take a guess because it's a weird word. Info and then M... E-R-S-I-A-L? It's C-I-A-L, but you were very C-M. close. Um, during the middle of an, of an infomercial filming, they suddenly and seamlessly transition into a real-life D&D campaign where their goal... I feel like it should be more open-ended because otherwise it's going to do exactly what you're doing. Okay, just okay, okay. into a real D&D campaign. Okay, and they have a grand adventure. It's still not. So okay, 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 okay. So just so D- I say D- in D- the middle in. of filming, something happens. Okay, and in the middle of filming, they suddenly and seamlessly <laughs> <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> uh, infomercial filming, um, something mind blowing and reality splitting happens. Here we go. <clears throat> As Mac stood in front of the camera, ready to begin his infomercial, he couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement and anticipation. He had always loved being in front of the camera and presenting products to his audience, and today was no different. Graham, his friend and video producer, stood off to the side, making final adjustments to the camera and lighting. Carter, Mac's other friend, and the brains behind the product they were selling, hovered nearby, anxious to see how the infomercial would turn out. As Mac began his pitch, he could feel the energy in the room shifting. It was as if something extraordinary was about to happen, and then in the middle of the infomercial, something truly mind-blowing occurred. Mac could feel a strange sensation wash over him, like he was being pulled in two different directions at once. He looked out at the camera and saw that the room around him was starting to split and shatter, as if it was being ripped apart by some unseen force. Graham and Carter watched in amazement as the room around them seemed to twist and contort, changing shape and form in ways they could never have imagined. They didn't know what was happening. But they knew they had to get out of there. <clears throat> As the infomercial filming came to a chaotic and unexpected end, Mac, Graham, and Carter fled the studio, not sure what they had just witnessed or how they would ever explain it. It was an experience they would never forget, never forget, and one that left them wondering what other strange and extraordinary things the universe might have in store. Do continue story. This is just the, the script of, uh, what, is that, what is the new, most latest Key and Peele movie? Uh, with the monkey? Nope. This is just nope. <laughs> do so. <laughs> Chimpanzee. The I don't know how to say this, but basically it's where we, because of that earth-shattering moment, <laughs> they have been transformed into three different celebrities that they didn't realize they were transformed into, and see if it comes up with what the celeb- what celebrity we are. Okay, so continue the story with a chimpanzee. Because of the earth-shattering moment, the three men have... Swapped bodies with three celebrities. Okay. Yeah. Have swapped... Famous celebrities. 
bodies. Oh, it should be B list celebrities. <laughs> like we have to Google Different. it. <laughs> like who is this? <laughs> Margot Robbie. Who? <laughs> who on earth is that? Boom roasted. Got him. The three men have swapped bodies with three different famous celebrities. I better be The Rock. But don't realize it. <gasps> it's like Jumanji. Right away. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a belching today. Here we go. Jumanji! Wait, an error occurred. If this issue persists... Oh, no. Hold on. Um, Sometimes that happens. So technical difficulties. You're not allowed to like use the... Violence. K-I-L-L word. So you can't... It's not letting that. me continue. Why? It just keeps giving me that error. What do I do to get out of this? What does it say? Uh, At the end of the day, technology is technology. Just rewrite. It won't let me rewrite it, though. Con continue story. Add a chimp and Z. Let's just simplify it. Just say... Once again, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe there and follow us on Spotify, podcasts, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us on Instagram, back to the roots underscore show. And if you're watching this short, subscribe. 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 There you go. Okay, here we go. You just have to simplify. Consider story as a chimpanzee, add a chimpanzee, the three men swapped bodies with random celebrities. As the three men stumbled out of the studio, still trying to make sense of what had just happened, they were shocked to see a chimpanzee standing in front of them, <laughs> staring them with a look of confusion on his face. Oh? <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Mac exclaimed, wondering if this was some kind of strange dream. Why did it have Josh cuss and then it went PG for you? <laughs> Because this was a buddy cop, that's a funny, oh, yeah. I don't know. What the heck is going on here, Max exclaimed, wondering what if this heck? was all some kind of strange dream. Suddenly, the chimpanzee spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, read this line in your monkey voice. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we've all swapped bodies with somebody, some random celebrities. <laughs> Okay. I feel like it's a cop out for AI. <laughs> like... The chimpanzee spoke. Oh, hmm. uh, let's see. Where were we? Um, some random celebrities. Hold on, pause. It said. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the it, chimp. Okay. That line happens, and then it says, it said in a deep, gravelly voice that was clearly not its own. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> okay, if he says something again, we're going to have you change it. Okay. Mac, Graham, and Carter looked at each other in disbelief. They couldn't believe what they were hearing. But as they looked down at their own bodies, they saw that the chimpanzee was right. They had all swapped places with some of the most famous people in the world. Mac was now in the body of a famous actor. Graham had become a famous musician, and Carter was now a famous athlete. They were all completely bewildered and had no idea how to get back to their own bodies. We've got to find a way to switch back, Graham said urgently. We can't, send, we can't spend the rest of our lives trapped in these bodies. The three men sat off on a journey, set off on a journey to find a way to reverse the body swap, encountering all sorts of challenges and obstacles along the way. They were chased by paparazzi, hounded by fans, and had to navigate the strange and unfamiliar worlds of Hollywood, the music industry, and professional sports. But through it all, they remained determined to find a way back to their own bodies and live their own lives. And in the end, they succeeded, thanks to the help of a wise old scientist who had figured out how to reverse the body swap. And I'm Tom Brady. As they returned to their own bodies and their own lives, Mac, Graham, and Carter couldn't help but look back on their strange and extraordinary journey with a, with a sense of wonder and amazement. They knew they would never forget the experience of swapping just, bodies with celebrities and the lessons they had learned along the way. way. It Slip. fails yeah. every time to provide see, detail. See if you can prompt it to figure out what the celebrities, who the uh, celebrities are. Prompt Mac, Graham, and Carter become obsessed with their celebrity alternates. I don't know what to say. I'm oh, trying to alter think ego. Their celebrity with discovering who their who celebrity their was so that they were and what celebrity they swapped with. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just going to be like they were so obsessed with how they subscribed to them, and then they found out they were them, and then they went and they became best buddies, and now Matt Graham and Carter are best friends, and Matt Graham and Carter solved the problem. The meet, end. Meet Mart. Loop bop. Okay. 
After returning to their own bodies and their own lives, Mac, Graham, and Carter couldn't stop thinking about their strange and extraordinary journey. They were still in shock over the fact that they had swapped bodies with some of those most famous people in the world, and they couldn't wait to find out who they had become. <laughs> I just have to know which celebrity I swapped with, Max said, his yes. curiosity getting the better of him. Me too, Graham and Carter agreed. <laughs> the three men became obsessed with discovering which celebrity they had swapped with, and they sp spent every waking moment trying to piece together the clues. <laughs> <laughs> they scoured the internet for any hints, <laughs> and they interviewed anyone who might have informed information about their experience as celebrities. Why are we dumb? Because <laughs> they delved deeper into their investigation. They began to uncover all sorts of surprises and expected details about their famous, about the lives of famous people. They discovered that they had all become wildly successful in their respective fields, <laughs> and that they had gained a huge amount of fame and fortune. Yeah. But as much as they enjoyed their newfound success, Mac, Graham, and Carter couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. Yes. They missed their old lives and their old selves. No! <laughs> and they longed to return to the way things were before the body swap, but they did. Eventually, after months of searching and sleuthing, they finally figured out which celebrities they had swapped with. Mac was shocked to learn that he had become a famous actor. <laughs> Come on! You're so Graham. close! Graham was amazed to discover that he had become a famous musician, and Carter was surprised to find out that he'd become a famous athlete. As they returned to their own lives and their own careers, Matt Graham and Carter couldn't help but look back on the journey with a sense of gratitude and appreciation. He, sorry, they knew that they had learned so much <laughs> from their experiences as celebrities and were grateful for the opportunity to see the world from a different perspective. Can we just do it? Don't continue the story. Just be like, what celebrities are they? <laughs> see what it'll say. It's like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't know. Two question marks. Shows urgency. I'm sorry, but I don't have specific information no! about which celebrities Mac, Graham, and Carter swapped bodies within the story. Oh, it does say that. It's like, nah. The story didn't specify which celebrities they swapped with, so it's up to the reader's imagination to decide. <laughs> I'm Tom Brady. That's pretty good. No, I was the athlete. Oh. You were an actor. I'm Tom Brady. <laughs> Still. Poser. Okay, does anybody have... Do we want to do one more? Sure. Does anybody let's have all, an idea? Let's all do it together. Let's, let's all think of, think of it together. together. Okay. I think you should have Krispy Kreme in it, because there's a Krispy Kreme cup on the table. I just copied the Josh and Nathan Jones script into a Word doc, so I never miss it. <laughs> Great. Uh, what if we did something about somebody being trapped on the conveyor belt at Krispy Kreme? Okay. And some of us trying to help them. Okay. Okay. We got to make it... In Antarctica, there's a donut store where, or there's a ro there's a rogue Krispy Kreme in Antarctica. Mac, Graham, and Carter go on a murder mystery to solve who is eating all of the donuts and killing the younglings. Oh wait, no, you can't do that one. Um, it won't let you kill what people. What if you were just I like? Wanted, okay. What if I was just so intrigued? I was in Granger, Indiana. I was so intrigued by the donuts that I found my way in there and got stuck on the Krispy Kreme icing conveyor belt. Okay, and then yeah. you two are trapped behind the glass trying to help me. Graham, is the is that camera still good? Yeah, I will need to change it actually. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yep. Write a murder mystery story about Graham Ward, Carter Warren, and Mac Mullins. Graham Ward. Do you want it to be a script or is it a murder mystery? What do we want it to be? Um, I like the script better. Write a. What about a play? <laughs> okay. Can we, can we try that? Let's do that. Write a, write, write a musical. Wait, what happens if you put musical? Write a musical <laughs> about Graham Ward being sucked into a. Glazer <laughs> at Krispy Kreme <laughs> at Krispy Kreme and Mac Mullins and Carter Warren have to try and save him with their plucky sidekick Dwayne the <laughs> no, <laughs> she, no, she's kidding, kidding. Okay. Try to save him with nothing but a tooth. Pick. How about the sound and of music? The sound of screeching <laughs> eels. <laughs> All right, go. 
I'd be happy to write, help you write a musical about that. Oh, okay. Never mind. It was just saying you'd be. Yeah. Here's a possible outline. Okay. <laughs> Act one, scene one. The Krispy Kreme shop is bustling with customers, and Graham is working behind the counter. Mac and Carter are two of the customers. Scene two, Graham accidentally gets sucked into the glazer while cleaning it. Mac and Carter witness it. Oh, th- see, this is- it's an okay. outline. Yeah, this is more of like a, okay. So Maybe I guess we should it would do be a movie script. script. Yeah. yeah, we'll do like a movie script. But that is interesting, you can do outlines. Yeah, right. It's pretty it, neat. Movie. You can have it write essays too for all your students out there. Use at your own discretion. All right, here we go. Interior, Krispy Kreme shop day. Okay. Also, I think this one, if there are dialogue lines, we should read our own. Yeah, we should read our own. Can you? Oh, if we all had Discord, we could do a screen share. But I have Discord. You have Discord. I don't have have Discord Discord on this computer. If anybody had Discord, I don't have it on this computer. I could log in. We could do Google Chat. Yeah. Wait, why have I gone incognito? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an aquarium? <laughs> don't, don't read ahead. I'm sorry. I'm getting like, I'm interested. All right, let's start with Google. You just want me to copy and paste it in there? Sure. Yeah. Please hold while we wait. Now, remember, if you join the Patreon, uh, you get to see us all French kiss a bag of almonds. So please join us. Next year, you just keep talking about almonds because I brought a oh, thing of almonds in yesterday. Yeah, that's I don't okay. We also are doing a whole script on Krispy Kreme because there's a cup here. That's true. <laughs> We're not very original. Are you gonna Did uh, you, share a document? It, it is still writing. Oh. <laughs> this is massive. <laughs> this is like huge. Wait, but can we start the, the end? Uh, okay, there we go. Can we start the chat? Well, I'm, I'm about to start it here. You go ahead. I you don't know just what that means. Copy into a Google Doc and share it with us. Oh, yeah, Google Doc. Yeah, just do our work. Emails. That's what I was gonna do. Here you go. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here uh, for those go. of you listening, make sure to give us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening. Or if it's on YouTube, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and hit the bell. I don't. Or actually, if you're not on YouTube, don't. Got them. Get that, that too. All right, here we go. The shop is bustling with customers as Graham Ward, a young man in his 20s, works behind the counter. Mac Mullins and Carter Warren are two of the customers. Graham to a customer. One dozen, <laughs> one, do- <coughs> one dozen glazed original coming right up. Graham goes back to the shop to clean the glazer. <laughs> Suddenly, there is a loud sucking noise, Hold and on. Graham disappears into the machine. Okay, I understand. Mac to Carter. Did you see that? Graham just got sucked into the glazer. We have to do something. Mac and Carter quickly run over to the glazer and try to figure out a plan. Grabbing a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> we can try to fish him out with this toothpick. I, But that might not be enough. <laughs> we need something to distract the glazer so it spits him out. Inspiration struck. It says, Carter, inspiration struck. I know. We could use the sound of screeching eels to distract it. Bingo! Mac and Carter set off on a mission to find some eels and figure out how to make them screech. In- <laughs> Interium Aquarium Day. Oh, interior, <laughs> interior Aquarium Day. Mac and Carter enter the aquarium and approach the eel tank. Carter, to the aquarium employee. Dang, we, I should I should do that. You I'm should sorry. do that. It's okay. I, I will it's okay. do better as a narrator. We need some eels that can screech. Do you have any of those? Aquarium employee, otherwise known as Graham, confused. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Eels don't normally make a sound, make any sound. Mac and Carter have a montage of different failed attempts at trying to make the eels screech, <laughs> including playing loud music and then poking them with sticks. <laughs> Interior, Krispy Kreme shop day. As time passes, Graham is still stuck in the glazer, and Mac and Carter are no closer to finding a solution. Solution. Just as they're about to give up, they have a breakthrough. Mac, excited. I just had an idea. What if we try to reverse the suction of the glazer? Carter, hopeful. <laughs> I had to pause. I'm sorry. I'm a little slow. That could work. Let's give it a try. Mac and Carter tinker with the machinery and eventually succeed in reversing the suction, freeing Graham. Graham, grateful. Thank you guys so much for saving me. I don't know what I would have done without you. Mac, smiling. No problem. 
That's what friends are for. <laughs> As a thank you, Graham invites Mac and Carter to a special donut making workshop at Krispy Kreme. <laughs> they have a great time learning how to make different types of donuts. Interior, Krispy Kreme shop day. The movie ends with a final scene showing Graham, Mac, and Carter enjoying a f- tray of freshly made donuts together, smiling and laughing. The camera pans out to show the busy Krispy Kreme shop with customers happily munching on donuts and enjoying the warm, welcoming atmosphere. The end. <laughs> That's pretty good. Do we continue? Let's make add, a sequel. Add an explosion. Okay, make sequel with explosion. A sequel. I do feel like Graham the entire time during that workshop is like actually really distracted by his PTSD of being sucked <laughs> into the glazer. Make a sequel with an explosion and a talking cow. Go. All right. You sure. That's here's a possible sequel. Oh wait, it's. It's writing. All right. Give it a moment. Oh. So what do you think, like, you were stuck in there for probably, like, two days? <laughs> Something like that. Where are the screeching eels? We were just trying to we poke never, them. We just were poking <laughs> eels the whole time. Come on. Screech. Screech. <laughs> Come on, do it. Okay. Oh, man. All right, we're getting close, boys. Don't you worry. Oh, this will be the end, or is this going to be a trilogy? Are we deciding now? Five star review. Hit subscribe. Hit follow. Constant plugging. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let me add this to the Google Doc. You said Option V. What so if it? you hit Shift Command V, then it will paste it without. Uh, Shift Command V. Oh, it did it. Okay, Carter's smart. Interior, Krispy Kreme shop return. Stop it. Graham, Mac, and Carter are back at the Krispy Kreme shop, happily working and making donuts together. Everything seems to be going well, until there's a loud explosion and the shop is engulfed in flames. Graham panicked. What's happening? That's the explosion. explosion. I didn't have an explosion sound effect. Carter shouting over the noise. (laughs) I don't know! But we have to get out of here! As they try to escape, they are suddenly confronted by a talking cow who appears out of nowhere! Talking cow in a deep voice, You fools. (laughs) I am the cow king, and I have come to claim this shop and its delicious donuts for myself. Mac, stunned. A talking cow? This is insane! Graham, determined. We can't let this cow king have our donuts. We have to stop him. With the help of the talking cow's bovine sidekick, Bessie, (laughs) Graham, Mac, and Carter come up with a plan to defeat the cow king and save the Krispy Kreme shop. They use a combination of their donut-making skills and the power of friendship to outsmart the cow king and foil his evil plans. You gonna make a sound effect? Oh. (laughs) Interior Krispy Kreme shop day. In the end, the Krispy Kreme shop is saved and the Cow King is defeated. Graham, Mac, and Carter, to celebrate their victory with a tray of donuts, joined by Bessie, the talking cow, who has decided to join their team and help at the shop. Can we do one where... lotion in my eyes. (laughs) Can we do one where they decide to make the donut shop also serve burgers and they serve the Cow King? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Turn Krispy Kreme into a hamburger shop Continue where they where they script. cook the cow king. <laughs> where they cook the cow king and have milkshakes. No, I'll just put and ha- cook the cow king. Boom. Oh, it says it can't do that because it's it's inappropriate to promote violence cook against the- any living being. Oh. But we killed them. Were, were they make hamburgers out of the cow? Okay. Were they make? There you go. That's how you skirt around hamburgers it. Hamburgers. We didn't kill him, but we did the eat him. Cow king. Save and submit. Sure. Here's the continuation <laughs> of the script. <laughs> All right. Here it goes. Remember, guys, like us on Patreon, and you can see Carter nude. <laughs> Wait, they can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carter Nips! Carter Nips! Carter Nips! <laughs> Stop the <Woo>! fun! <laughs> <laughs>
Nips needs to stop. <laughs> Carter Nips. <laughs> Coming to a Patreon near you. For only three grand a month, you can see Carter's nips. I do that for three grand a month. Okay, the script is ready. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Don't forget to paste it into the doc. About to do that right now, daddy. Okay, here we go. I'm so sweaty. This beanie's hot. <laughs> All right. Interior Krispy Kreme shop day. Wait, can you going to paste? Oh, yeah. Never mind. I did. Yep. As the Krispy Kreme... Oh. As the Cow King's flames continue to engulf the shop, Mac, Graham, and Carter come up with a plan to defeat him. Graham <laughs> to Mac and Carter. I have an idea. If, I thought we defeated him. I thought we did too. I think it's we okay. did, but it'll be, it's fine. Flashback. I have an idea. If we can get the Cow King into the glazer, we can turn him into hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, excited. That's a great idea, but how are we going to get him in there? Carter, inspiration struck. I know. We could use the sound of screeching eels to distract him, just like last time. Mac and Carter quickly search for the eels and figure out how to make them screech. They use the sound to distract the cow king and lure him towards the glazer. <laughs> Talking cow. Angrily, what is that infernal noise? I cannot concentrate. As the cow king gets closer to the glazer, Graham activates the suction and sucks him inside. Talking cow screaming, no! Interior, Krispy Kreme shop day. A few minutes later, the cow king emerges as delicious, perfectly formed hamburgers. <laughs> Graham, Mac, and Carter serve them up to grateful customers. <laughs> They're overjoyed to have their favorite donuts back. <laughs> and apparently burgers. Graham to Mac and Carter. We did it. The Krispy Kreme shop is saved and even have a new menu and item to celebrate. Mac laughing. Who would have thought that defeating the Gao King would be so easy as to turning him into hamburgers? Carter smiling. I guess anything is possible when you have a good plan and the power <laughs> <laughs> and the power of friendship on your side. <laughs> the movie ends with a final scene showing Graham, Mac, and Carter happily serving up donuts and hamburgers to a line of satisfied customers. Joined, joined by Bessie, <laughs> the talking cow, who has decided to stay and help out the shop. I want to bring up, too, that Bessie, <laughs> when she's first mentioned, is the cow king's sidekick, but she helps us <laughs> defeat him. So and now she's serving I'm, up her own meat. <laughs> I feel like this is like Star Wars. Like they kind of went back a little ways. They're yeah. like, wait, wait, wait. We got to describe. Like we got like the ending, and then we got like the begin, the middle of it. So can you continue and get Bessie's backstory? <laughs> Ooh, let's do it. Continue with Bessie's backstory. Sure. Here's a continuation of that script. Now remember, everybody, Carter's. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, we have to wait, though, so Carter, give us something to laugh about. I'm not good at that. That's why we're doing this. Uh, make sure to listen to the last uh, 20 episodes of Back to the Roots. There's been a lot of plugs in this episode. I, do you know what? I realized I don't plug enough. Hey, <laughs> That's great. Watch the content! <laughs> that should just be a clip on its own. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I'm sorry. I'm just yelling now. Graham, is, every, is everybody too loud for you, Graham? They're a little loud. Did that hurt? <laughs> Your the blue cord is always turning you down just a little bit. We're we're getting there. Oh my goodness, this is a really good backstory. I hope. I I mean, Bessie has a lot of dialogue, so <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty. Are you Bessie? I'm pretty pumped. Sure. I is there other Bessie. characters? Uh, it's Graham, Bessie, Mac, Carter. And that's it. Be I have one line, so I can be Bessie, or you can be Bessie. I don't. I'm good to not be Bessie. You would be now. talking to yourself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bessie's backstory just involves... It's just Graham talking. We have a checkered past. <laughs> okay. There you go. <clears throat> Interior. Krispy Kreme shop day. After the Cow King has been defeated and turned into hamburgers, Graham, Mac, and Carter sit down and enjoy the rest of their day. Uh, a tray of donuts. <laughs> Bessie, the talking cow, joins them. Looking a bit sheepish. Don't Graham you mean to cowish? Bessie. <laughs> <laughs> Graham to Bessie. Thanks for your help, Bessie. You were a big part of our victory over the cow king. Bessie nodding. I'm just happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I could be of service. I owe you, the three of you, a lot. Mac interested. What do you mean? How did you end up working with the cow king in the first place? Bessie sighing. 
It's a long story. You see, I used to be a normal cow, living on a farm with my herd. But one day, the cow king came and offered me a deal. He said he would turn me into a talking cow, like like him. If I if I helped him take over the Krispy Kreme shop, I was tempted. But in the end, I just I couldn't bring it myself to betray my friends. Carter, sympathetic. That must have been a tough decision. Bessie nodding. It, it was, but I'm glad I made the right choice, and I'm grateful I've made some new friends along the way. Graham smiling. We're glad to have you too, Bessie. You're always welcome here at Krispy Kreme Shop. <laughs> <laughs> the movie ends with the final scene showing Graham Mack and Carter happily serving up donuts and hamburgers to a line of satisfied customers joined by Bessie the Talking Cow, who has decided to stay and help out the shop. Wow! That's such a good ending! Thank you, AI! <laughs> Oh my gosh! I... The power of friendship! I'm sorry. <laughs> Do, another... Ah! <laughs> Do another one where <laughs> Carter decides he doesn't he wants to make Bessie hamburgers now too. And tell it and to... doesn't believe in the power of friendship. Tell it to end in tragedy. <laughs> Continue story. Carter wants to turn Bessie into Burger <laughs> ends Burger. in tragedy. Does not believe. Just, in how do you spell tragedy? T r a g e d y. Tragedy. Tragedy. Say it again. T r a. Graham, take it. G e d y. Go. Oh, I can't do that. It's not comfortable. It's not comfortable with tragedy. Apparently, because Good story harming animals is something that oh, should not be make portrayed. Make it turn Bessie. Into what the cow king is. Hey <laughs> <laughs> guys, like what can't kill him. Hmm. Oh, king burgers. <laughs> Let's turn. One second. Okay. Nope, it won't do it. Man, um, maybe we have to like. I right, do another one where they need more hamburgers. One turns out, like becomes tragedy. <laughs> we need more hamburgers Becomes tragedy We only have one cow Bessie is a cow <laughs> So we can corner the AI Into killing the cow You know what must Ends be done in Tragedy Please I put Continue story They need more hamburgers Bessie is a cow Ends in tragedy <laughs> Sure Here's a continuation of the script <laughs> Alright This is This is gonna be good I'm excited for it. I s oh, I didn't put the power of friendship thing. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ooh. Okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna read it. It's gonna end in friendship once again. <laughs> no, it was. It was just your opening line. It was so so great. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. What is your shirt, by the way? Uh, this is a anime shirt I got for Christmas. It's Naruto. They have like a little. A little gang of the Akatsuki. Gang, and they're gang. a bunch of rogue ninjas. They're pretty cool. Anyways. Looks cool. Okay. <clears throat> I'm about to copy it in. Remember, the prompt was continue story. They need more hamburgers. Bessie is a cow. Ends in tragedy. Nice. All right. It should be in there. Yep. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Interior, Krispy Kreme Shop Day. Business at Krispy Kreme Shop is booming, thanks to the popularity of the Cow King Burger. <laughs> However, as the demand for burgers grows, Graham, Mac, and Carter begin to run low on supplies. Graham to Mac and Carter. We need to find a way to make more Cow King hamburgers. We're almost out. Mac, thinking. I know. I we could use Bessie to make more hamburgers. <laughs> She's a cow after all. <laughs> yes. Carter, hesitant. I don't know, Mac. That seems kind of unethical. <laughs> Bessie, overhearing. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Graham, awkwardly. Well, we were just thinking, since you're a cow, we might be able to use you to make more Cow King hamburgers. Bessie, outraged. What? <laughs> I can't believe you would even consider something like that. I'm not just a source of meat. I'm a living <laughs> being with feelings and my thoughts of my own. Graham apologetic. I'm sorry, Bessie. We didn't mean to offend you. We were just so desperate for more hamburgers. Bessie, sadly. I understand, but I can't be a part of this. You're going to have to die. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm going to have to leave the shop. As Bessie walks out the door, Graham, Mac, and Carter are left to contemplate the consequences of their actions. Oh my gosh. The movie ends with a final scene showing Mac, Graham, and Carter standing in the empty Krispy Kreme shop looking sad and regretful. The camera pans out to show this closed <laughs> sign on the door signaling the end of the Krispy Kreme adventure. <laughs> The AI wants we, us to be done so we bad. We flew too close to the sun. Okay, we got to do one more where we track down where Bessie lives and build a Krispy Kreme on her land. <laughs> yep. We're vengeful towards Bessie. Continue, We're bitter towards Bessie. Continue story. We, Mac, Graham, and Carter seek revenge. I don't know. That might be too harsh. We'll find yeah. Bessie. No, that's too much. Are bitter at Bessie and seek to find her. That's a good one. Are bitter with Bessie. Are bitter with Bessie. <laughs> but it's just going to have and us all make up at the end. Seek to find her. There ends in tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> big tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, here I gotta I gotta add the big. Big climactic. Tragedy. <laughs> oh, it's not letting me change it. No! Whatever. I wonder what happens. We'll try this another time, but I wonder what would happen if we just used the same prompt, copied and pasted to the end of each segment. That would be pretty good. <laughs> I feel like it would just be like, good job, buddy. You made a good script. Oh, okay. I think it's, I think it's ending good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, Bessie's going to have a voice change in this one because I don't like her voice anymore. It's not fun. Uh, well, she becomes a little bit more hardened and salted. She's a smoker. She, like, goes she back. She starts smoking she, cigarettes. She's a little like higher this. than that, though. She starts smoking cigarettes <laughs> like this. So she's got a little bit of a... You got to have a voice crack in there. She's a little, got the... <laughs> I don't even know what to say there because she's just a little cigarette smoking cow. I don't know. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> don't read. Don't read. Ah! Oh my gosh. <laughs> I read the ending. <laughs> no! <laughs> Remember, guys, subscribe to the Patreon. See Carter's nipples. Okay, it's ready. <laughs> Cut that out. I don't think I will. Oh, wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Did it cut off? Yeah. It's... Oh, God. What are you talking about? You wrote it, stupid. What did it say? Did it stop itself? It's like, say, stop yeah. it. Yeah, it's like, we can't do... We can't continue. <laughs> I love how it just catches itself. <laughs> it's like, what? What am I doing? <laughs> For real, it like ends it. Okay, we're gonna read all the way up to the ending, and then we'll show that it doesn't. Okay, it won't allow you. That's crazy. Like it won't. I it stops mid sentence. I would be really fascinated with, like obviously it has the ability to keep going. Uh -huh. There's gonna be another version of this where they take the safety. Oh, off. I guarantee oh, you, there's yeah. an NS NS that's gonna FW get w that's gonna get one sketchy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Interior Krispy Kreme shop day. After Bessie leaves the shop. Graham, Mac, and Carter are left feeling bitter and resentful. They can't believe that Bessie would abandon them just when they needed her the most. <laughs> Graham to Mac and Carter. I can't believe Bessie would do this to us. We were her friends. Mac, angry. I know, and now we're stuck with no way of making more Cow King burgers. Carter determined. We have to find Bessie and convince her to come back. She's the only one who can help us. Graham, Mac, and Carter set off on a mission to find Bessie and bring her back to the Krispy Kreme shop. They search far and wide, but no matter where they look, they can't seem to find her. Interior, Krispy Kreme shop, day. As the days pass, the Krispy Kreme shop starts to suffer, even though it's closed. <laughs> Without the Cow King burgers, business slows down, and the three friends begin to worry about the future. Graham to Mac and Carter. I don't know how much longer we can keep this up. We need Bessie to come back. Mac, hopeful. I know, but we can't give up yet. We just have to keep searching. Just as they're about to lose hope, they receive a message from Bessie. <laughs> Bessie on the phone. Guys, I'm sorry I have to do this, and I'm sorry I left the way that I did. I just couldn't bear the thought of being used for meat. 
But I've been thinking, and I want to help you. I know I can't make more Cow King burgers, but maybe there's another way. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, Mac, and Carter are overjoyed to hear from Bessie and eagerly listen to her plan. Interior Krispy Kreme shop day. Bessie's plan involves using a new plant-based meat substitute <laughs> no! to make the Cow King hamburgers. Graham, Mac, and Carter are skeptical at first, but they eventually agree to give it a try. The new Cow King burgers are a hit, and business at Krispy Kreme shops starts to pick up again. Graham, Mac, and Carter are grateful to Bessie for her help and apologize for the way they treated her before. Bessie, smiling. It's all water under the bridge. I'm just glad we can make things right. Interior Krispy Kreme shop day. However, just as things seem to go be going well, disaster strikes! There's another explosion, and this time bigger and badder than before, and the Krispy Kreme shop is completely destroyed. Graham, Mac, and Carter are killed in the blast, <laughs> and Bessie is left to mourn their loss. What the frick? <laughs> it won't let us kill Bessie, but it kills us? <laughs> Interior Krispy Kreme shop day. The movie ends with a final scene showing Bessie standing in the rubble of the destroyed shop. Tears in her eyes fade to black. That's wild. <laughs> it killed us. It killed us. AI wants to kill us. That's the clip that's going to start the whole podcast. No! <laughs> Oh, the power of friendship wasn't enough. <laughs> it had to kill us. Can you do a continue story? Does the power of friendship bring us back? <laughs> continue script. Bessie attempts to resurrect Carter, Graham, and Mac, but fails horribly. No thanks. Oh, you got it. What? Did you already add it? Enter it? Yeah. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. No. What were you going to put? No thanks to the power of friendship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> AI is just like, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Write your own stupid script. I like that that's the best that it has to offer. It's just like, I'll bet you if you asked it, what's the what's the key to world peace? The it's going to say the power of friendship. It's the key to world peace. Peace. Understanding thy neighbor. Achieving world peace is a complex and multifaceted goal that involves a variety of factors such as political, economic, and social factors. There is no single key to achieving world peace, but some steps that may help include. Oh, see, yeah, it never stops mind. Us. Okay, I don't know if this. It doesn't stop it. Maybe we just need to let it lie. Yeah, Bessie. I'll I'll add this. After the explosion that destroys the Krispy Kreme shop and kills Graham, Mac, and Carter, Bessie is left to mourn. She is devastated and can't bear the thought of being alone. Bessie becomes determined to find a way to resurrect her friend. She spends, spends all of her time experimenting and trying to find a solution. At the end of it, Bessie sets up her laboratory in the ruin, ruined Krispy Kreme shop and starts working on a plan to bring Graham, Mac, and, back, <laughs> Graham, Mac, and Carter back to life. She tries all different methods but nothing works. As Bessie continues, she becomes more and more obsessed with finding a solution. She starts to neglect her own health and well-being, <laughs> determined to succeed at any cost. I'm going to ad-lib the last part. She begins to lose weight and soon begins addicted to cigarettes. She falls into the... <laughs> she falls back into the Cow King's trap and begins to be pimped out every day, <laughs> making Cow King burgers on the side to... Further, he's dead. Her, to further her, <laughs> I think her she's research, slicing like <laughs> portions of meat off of herself. Yes. <laughs> to further her research, to bring Graham Mac and Carter back to life. Eventually, she meets the wrong man who wants some of her meat, and kills her. The end. <laughs> Anyways, wow. I, that was by the way a side thing. I looked up what the most powerful thing in the world is. Yeah. For AI. <laughs> And two of the options, they gave me five, but two of them, nuclear weapons and love. <laughs> <laughs> love is war. Wow. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us in this AI story time. Uh, we'll be back with you again with another bottle or another can another time. Subscribe to the Patreon, Carter's Nips, Carter's five time. bucks a month. Love y'all.
was a beautiful train wreck of a yeah, conversation. <laughs>